One day after the US said 3,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia and warned that those forces will be fair game if they go into combat in Ukraine, the Pentagon slammed Russian President Vladimir Putin, suggesting the move is one of desperation. Vladimir Putin has become so desperate that he is now willing and soliciting, you know, potentially support from the DPRK to put there their personnel on the battlefield, said Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh. Russian lawmakers ratified a pact with North Korea envisioning mutual military assistance. The lower house of the Russian parliament, the State Duma, voted quickly to endorse the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Treaty that Russia's President Vladimir Putin signed with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un on a visit to Pyongyang in June. The upper house is expected to follow suit soon. The pact obliges Russia and North Korea to immediately provide military assistance using all means if either is attacked. It marked the strongest link between Moscow and Pyongyang since the end of the Cold War. If the DPRK soldiers enter into combat, they would be co-belligerents, Singh said. And that is a very serious issue. The Pentagon also weighed in on the humanitarian situation in Gaza as Secretary of State Antony Blinken traveled to Doha to meet with Qatari officials, who have been key mediators in the Israel-Hamas war. The US continues to struggle to break the logjam of ceasefire negotiations between Israel and the militant group. The humanitarian situation is as dire, Singh said. So we know that a ceasefire would be the best way to get, whether it be food, water, humanitarian needs in, as well as medical treatment, into Gaza. Finally, Singh said US troops participated in an Iraqi-led operation against ISIS fighters in the Anbar province in Iraq. The Pentagon is evaluating the operation and was not aware of any US casualties in the operation. Singh also provided an update on a joint raid by U.S. and Iraqi troops earlier this week that killed more than half a dozen Islamic State leaders in Iraq, but also left two U.S. troops injured. Singh said the two U.S. troops are in stable condition and will get follow-on care at Walter Reed National Military Center outside of Washington, D.C. She also said a third American service member is being evaluated for TBI. This really highlights Russia's desperation, um, you know, tin cupping to the DPRK, to Iran, um, enticing DPRK soldiers, you know, if, if they were to ever enter the fight. Um, I think that shows that Putin has failed in his strategic objectives on the battlefield. Returned yesterday from a busy week of travel. A summary of Vladimir Putin has become so desperate that he is now willing and, and soliciting, um, you know, potentially support from the DPRK to put their their personnel on the battlefield. Um, and, you know, we're talking about uh, you know, over 500,000 um, casualties that, you know, Russia has experienced on the battlefield. Um, so if the DPRK soldiers enter into combat, um, they would be co-belligerents, and that is a very serious issue. Um, but it's not a... It's, you know, it's something that we're, you know, aware of this relationship, we're going to continue to monitor. Um, and um, I think, again, the important point here is that it really highlights Putin's desperation, um, because he has really failed to meet his strategic objectives on the battlefield. You know, the humanitarian situation is, is dire. Um, so we know that a ceasefire would be the best way to get whether it be food, water, you know, humanitarian needs in, um, as well as medical treatment into, into Gaza. Um, we also know that, you know, Israel has been effective um, in really dismantling Hamas in Gaza. Hamas, you know, cannot conduct the type of um, attack that they conducted on October 7th today. They just don't, they, they have been um, dismantled into a way where they are not that, that same organization pre-October 7th. Um, we have also urged, you know, Sinwar's death is an opportunity. Um, let's use it. So again, you're seeing Secretary Blinken in the region. Um, I don't have more to add to his comments, but we certainly haven't given up hope. Um, it's something that this administration is going to continue to push for. With his NATO cap
counterparts in Brussels. And, a first and earlier today, U.S. forces participated in an Iraqi-led operation against ISIS fighters in the Anbar province in Iraq. Our assessment of the operation is still ongoing, and to my knowledge, there were no U.S. personnel injured in the operation. Additionally, I have an update on the two service members wounded in a partnered raid with Iraqi security forces on October 22nd. Earlier this week, the ISF, enabled by personnel from CJTF OIR, conducted strikes and follow-on raids on multiple ISIS locations in central Iraq, targeting several senior ISIS leaders and killing at least seven ISIS operatives. During the operation, two U.S. military personnel were wounded by an explosion while assisting Iraqi forces with site exploitation. While both service members sustain serious injuries, they are in stable condition and are currently en route to Walter Reed Medical Center for follow-on care. Additionally, we recently learned a third service member is being assessed for potential TBI. And as you know, TBI numbers can fluctuate over time. All are in stable condition and receiving the care that they need. South Korea's President Yoon suk Yeol said Thursday that his government could review the possibility of sending lethal weapons to Ukraine, depending on North Korean troops' activities, in Russia. The statement came during the joint press conference with Poland's President Andrzej Duda, who agreed to bolster their joint response to North Korea's troop dispatch to Russia during Thursday's summit. South Korea, as principal, has not supplied lethal weapons to Ukraine. The meeting between Yoon and Duda came a day after U.S. and South Korean officials said they believe around 3,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia and are training at several locations. South Korea's spy agency told lawmakers that North Korea likely aims to send a total of 10,000 troops to Russia by the end of the year. Both Moscow and Pyongyang have denied the presence of North Korean troops. Uh, 핵미사일 개발과 도발, 그리고 러시아와의 불법 군사 협력을 강력한 어조로 규탄했습니다. 특히 유엔 헌장과 안보리 결의를 정면으로 위반하는 북한의 러시아 파병은 한반도와 유럽을 넘어 전 세계의 안보를 위협하는 도발이라는 점에 의견을 같이 했습니다.